Hello, my name is Adam Dubay. I'm an assistant professor at McGill University and I teach educational technology. And today I'm going to try to help you how to spot a good elementary educational app for your child. Something that I thought might be useful when the schools are being closed for the betterment of public health. And so right now you might be thinking, how is my child going to keep learning while the schools are closed? And you might want to turn to some educational apps or educational games. Well, there are over 80,000 educational apps in the Apple App Store. That's a lot of educational apps to have to search through. Now, unfortunately, fewer than 40% of the educational apps that are out there are actually designed with expert input when they're being made. And fewer than 6% of the so-called top apps in the Apple App Store are actually expert approved or evaluated. Now, when researchers ask parents if they want help finding good educational apps, half of parents say yes. So that's why I thought I'd put out this little video for you today. So how do you spot a good educational app? Well, to do this, you're going to be looking for something called the E-Aims. You're going to ask yourself, is the app engaging? Is the app active? Does the app have an easily identifiable learning goal? Does the app promote meaningful learning? And is the app social? And I'm going to help you find each of those aims. Now, these aims are based on the work by uh, Kathy hirsch pasek and colleagues. And you can see the citation down there if you want to read the original research for yourself. Now, first off, ask yourself, is the app engaging but not distracting? Because the best educational apps are the ones that kids want to use. Without the child's buy-in, you might as well give them a traditional paper and pencil task. Now, you want them to be engaged, but not distracted. Because a lot of apps try to engage kids by having a lot of noise happening on the screen. Here's an example. Yeah, that's enough of that. You can see from that app, there's a lot of distracting animations going on. So if you want to ask yourself, is this app engaging and not distracting? You have to try the app, tap around the screen yourself, and ask yourself, are my taps distracting from learning, or do they direct me towards learning? Now for the second one is active. Does the app promote active minds on learning? See, children learn most when they are actively engaged in the learning activity and not being passive observers. And so you may see your child using an educational app and they're tapping the screen, but tapping doesn't always equal thinking. Simply tapping to progress the story or tapping to create an animation can be minds off. Instead, what you want is tapping that reflects a purposeful decision. That's minds on. So ask yourself, when you're trying out the app, does tapping on the screen require making a choice? If so, it's much more likely to be minds on. Now the next one is, does the app have an easily identifiable learning goal? Ask yourself, what is the app trying to teach me? Try the app, read the description of the app. If you can't figure out what the app is trying to teach you, then delete it. Here's an example of an app that's supposed to teach uh, spatial reasoning. Now, I do math research. I played the app for five minutes. I read the description, and I have no idea how this teaches spatial reasoning. Delete it. Now, here's an app that says it teaches fractions. You t you, in the app, I played it. You cut objects into pieces. It has fractions in the screen. I can see how I'm taking one object. I'm breaking it into fours. Each of those is one quarter. I can see, yeah, I get what the learning goal here is. This app is much more likely to be better. So ask yourself, can you tell what this app is trying to teach your child? If so, great, great. Now for the next one, is the app meaningful? Now, what is, what do I mean by this? Well, is it personally relevant to your child? Does it build on their existing interests? Because sustainable and useful learning comes from experiences that connect to our existing knowledge and backgrounds. So, you know your child. Look for educational apps that connect to their experience and their interests. Not only will they find them more engaging, but research shows they are much more likely to learn when those apps are meaningful to them. Now for the last one, social. Playing together means learning together. 
So how do you make apps social? Well, unfortunately, most apps are actually designed to be used individually by your child. They're not meant to have parental involvement, but you can make it a social app by using apps as a conversation starter. Simply ask your child what's happening in their app. What are they doing? If the app, say for example, is teaching them about shapes like circles and squares and triangles and rhombuses, ask them, can you see any triangles in the living room? Can you see any circles in the kitchen? Ask them what's happening in the app. Try to make a connection between the app and what's happening in the household. Simply by having a conversation with your child about their learning apps will make the apps more effective because it helps their, your child connect what they're learning in the app to the real world. So. How do you spot a good educational app for your kid? Read the description, play the app for a little bit, ask yourself, does it contain the e-aims? If it doesn't, well then it counts against your child's screen time and maybe it's just for fun. Doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. And if it does contain the e-aims, great. Then maybe it's a good, helpful learning experience for your child. So that's it. Hopefully you found this useful on how to spot a good elementary educational app for your child. If you're interested in any of the other work that we do, um, I'm at the Technology Learning and Cognition Lab. You can find us at mcgill.ca slash TLC. All the best to everyone and everyone stay healthy.